Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, AP is reporting that Putin warns of sending Western troops to Ukraine risk a global nuclear war. We saw yesterday where Hal Turner had mentioned uh, that Russian uh, Federation was moving around nuclear missiles around the country. And as I was on with Bonnie Harvey last night, one of the comments that I made there to her is that the reason for those moving of those missiles is to send that clear message to let people know that uh, indeed, yes, he is ready for nuclear war if that's what it comes down to. It's not that he has to move any kind of nuclear weapons around the country. It's only a show of force that he is willing to carry out exactly what he plans to do. Well, that's interesting, though, with uh, with Vladimir Putin giving this threat here. And, of course, he's up for re-election as well. I'm very curious to see what's going to happen in that campaign. Looks like he may stay in office. I know there was a lot of talk that he would go out of office in 2024, but I think the continual threats on his life has made it uh, in his interest to stay in power, at least maybe the way he perceives that. Uh, moving on in, though, Biden is fit for duty after annual physical workouts five days a week, doctor says. <clears throat> wow, that's kind of interesting, right? Didn't that make you feel all fuzzy inside to know that we could end up in a thermal nuclear war with Russia? And at the same time, our commander in chief is fit as fiddle at 81 years old and, uh, you know, getting around with his arthritis. No mention of that dementia problem, though, that's going on that eventually will cause all the organs to fail in the body unless something could be done. And, of course, there is something that could be done. But would anybody ever bother to even share it with him? I highly doubt it. But... You know, even myself, I have that kind of compassion for anybody, any soul, regardless. Give somebody a chance there. Um, moving on over in this one here, Israeli, the IDF. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> let me real quick share with you. Charles Hodge, he is here on Twitter. Um, whoop, didn't work out the way I thought it would. Let me pull up over here real quick for Twitter there. Charles Hodge is, he is always sharing some amazing stuff for us here, and, uh, so I'd like to just share his channel with you, you know, to where if you'd like to follow him, he's always got some amazing good reports. Well, Charles, where are you at on your channel there? There we go, me. Charles Hodge. Let's see. Whoop, I put, two, I put the S in there, and I shouldn't have put the S in there. There we go. So if you'd like to follow Charles there, like I said, does an amazing, uh, Amazing work on his uh, uh, sharing news information with me. I really appreciate the work that Charles does. And you can follow him at Charles Hodge, H-O-D-G-E, on uh, Twitter there. <clears throat> anyway, jumping back over here, the things that are going on. The IDF, they're posting out there uh, 160 packages of food and medical equipment were airdropped into southern Gaza and Jordanian field hospital in Khan Yunus. This was part of an international cooperation between, look at themselves, Israel, the USA, the UAE, Jordan, Egypt, and France. Well, I think that the Israel, the USA, the only airdrops of humanitarian aid that they've been dropping are in the in the uh, form of bombs. You know, this really is such a hypocrite to drop bombs on a people and then drop humanitarian aid. Well, it got a little nasty, a little out of hand, though. This is what happened when that food aid was being dropped. Listen in. As if it was a trap. Once we approached the aid trucks, the Israeli tanks and warplanes started firing on us. If this continues like this, we do not want any aid delivered at all. Every convoy coming means another massacre. Instead of aid, they've come away with the dead. By donkey cart, car and makeshift stretches, the wounded are taken to nearby hospitals, all of which are overwhelmed and barely functioning. This is exactly what we have been warning about, the hospital being out of service amid this massive influx of patients. We are operating on batteries. Most of our victims are in critical condition, which requires urgent surgical intervention. But the hospital is without operating rooms. I stand helpless. We are simply administering first aid treatment only. One of the survivors says bodies are still lying on the streets where they were gunned down. 
This is what happened when humanitarian aid got delivered thanks to Israel uh, and there's such cooperation that they're doing there. They claim that they felt threatened and uh, soldiers felt threatened so they just opened fire on the people. Now granted, people that are starving to death, that have no food, have not had food and, and no telling how long, uh, are desperate to get humanitarian aid. They were doing enough harm to themselves trying to fight over getting the food and stuff off the trucks. But for the military, uh, Israeli military, just to open fire on these people, that's just not acceptable. Um, you know, so yeah, so much Israel can boast about delivering humanitarian aid. Well, they've delivered a lot more bombs than they have humanitarian aid. That's one thing that's for sure. Uh, and, and I would have to say here, President Lula of Brazil, I think he puts it the best here in his uh, statement to, uh, about Netanyahu and what he's doing. Listen to what the the uh, president of Brazil had to say. O que eu quero dizer alto e bom som é o seguinte: o primeiro ministro de Israel está praticando um genocídio contra mulheres e crianças. Esse é um dado histórico. E o que eu quero dizer alto e bom som é o seguinte: o primeiro ministro de Israel está praticando um genocídio couldn't be more plain than that, could you? And this is in a country that, uh, that Israel has been working very hard with their rabbis to convert all the Christians to messianic or, or to get them, you know, some, some kind of campaign to say that they got to repent for ever being Christians. That's what, that's what uh, the, the big campaign of uh, uh, Shapira, Yitzhak Shapira has been doing there in that part of the world there, trying to get these people to uh, repent for becoming Christians during the, their parents there during the Inquisition uh, and to turn back to the rabbis. Hmm. Well, thank God it didn't work with the president of Brazil. I can certainly say you that. Uh, this also, Charles sent me this particular one here as well. <laughs> Okay, they're talking about maybe ram it. They don't know what to do about it. Now, I do not think it's an actually, it is an unidentified flying object for sure for most people there, but I do believe that the object that you're looking at is another case of American-made technology. The one thing that I shared with you guys a while back, it's been months ago now, that uh, mainly it was over the Israeli war, is that you would see unidentified flying objects in the sky that they would begin to use and bring out publicly some of this technology that the U.S. has in their arsenal uh, in the battlefields in war. And I believe that's exactly what you're seeing, whether it's the West or whether it's technology from Russia. Both countries do have those types of capabilities, so both countries may showcase some of that technology, even though they will never maybe admit to it. Uh, the USS Nimitz, when they showed the, uh, the uh, tic-tac-type shape uh, craft that was flying near that, was disclosed to me later that that was a U.S.-made, uh, reverse-engineered UFO, so, and that it was actually one of our own and not somebody else's there. Uh, I want to play also this clip right here. This uh, uh, Claire Daly, uh, and I believe Claire's from Ireland, if I remember right. Forgive me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, Claire, uh, sorry, sorry if I got that wrong. But uh, but anyway, she is an uh, EMP MEP member. And I really, really appreciated her interesting comments about the death uh, of... Uh, uh, I'll play the guy because I forget his name right off the top of my head that the, that was killed in a, or died in a Russian prison. But she really brings it to home on what her thoughts are. And I'd like to share that with you. Very outspoken uh, uh, MP member in the government there. Expected, as I've said many times before, Alexei Navalny should not have been in prison. His death in detention is appalling and an impartial investigation into the circumstances absolutely necessary. But while respecting the dead, we also have to be accurate in our memories. Was he Russia's democratic messiah? I don't believe so. A courageous activist? Yes. But what kind? A free marketeer? A fan of the 90s reforms that led to Putin? A race baiter? Ejected from the Liberals who then founded a nationalist coalition 
with the extreme right and led anti-immigration rallies in the 2000s, a gun rights activist who made ads joking about shooting Muslims. Of course, none of this justifies his treatments. His rights are just as important as anybody else. But if Navalny had been a socialist or a trade unionist, I don't think anybody here would know his name. 200 Palestinian journalists have been murdered since October. They don't matter because our ally killed them. It's very clear we care nothing about oppressed civil society unless it's in our geopolitical interest. <laughs> she, rights of all she knows when to have to leave, when that gavel goes down. But thank God at least she has the, uh, the, 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 the audacity to stand up at the European Union uh, and speak what she believes. So uh, my hat's off to this lady here for her courageousness. Stephen Vanoon here with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Uh, don't forget, for those of you that want to join a Zoom call tonight, I have uh, only f limited to 500 people that will be able to attend. Uh, I'm going to be going into uh, faith, how to build your faith for praying for the sick. All you got to do is www.steven, S-T-E-V-E-N, Benun, B-E-N-N-U-N.com. And that's at 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.